Okay, so here I am. I'm again doing a on quote online homework problem. Uh, and I will remind you that it's not about the answer. I mean, if you're here to say, oh, I, I need this for my homework. I need to do it. I need to do it now. This is not going to help you. I mean, you, you're going to get the answer. Okay. But we have these homework problems to help us understand what's going on. And, and you really need to struggle with these. If you've done that and now you're here, this could be useful. Okay, but if your goal is to just get the answer, then, then that's all you're going to get out of it. So this is the problem. It says, I'll read it exactly. A dragster with a mass of 468 kilograms accelerates from rest to a final speed of 125 meters per, per second in 425 meters. And I drew my nice little picture there. And encounters an average frictional force of 1,156 newtons. What is the work done by the engine? And B, what is the power output of the engine if it takes 7.16 seconds? Okay, so it's obviously a work energy problem, right? They ask for work. <clears throat> I Like always, we kind of need to say what our system is. It's it's strange in this case because the the car is both doing work and part of the system, right? It's the engine, um, but but really, it should be like this. If I wanted, I would say this. My system, I would do it this way. Is the dragster plus? That's it. I would say the dragster. Yeah, plus the in, which, which is, has lots of pieces in it. So now we can go to the work energy principle, which says work is a change in energy. And I'm going to use the uh, <clears throat> constant force definition of work. If you know there, if the force is changing, you have to make it an integral. But we probably don't hear. So work is defined. Work done by a particular force is F dot delta R. And now what about change in energy? In this case, we have two types of change in energy. We have the change in kinetic energy. So we can define K as 1 half mv squared. And then we have delta E chemical. And I don't know that. Okay. But So this engine is going to burn fuel through a chemical reaction. And then you'll get a different chemical afterwards. And so that change in chemical energy, really, stored chemical energy, you can call it a bunch of different things, that's what's going to uh, make the car increase in speed. Okay, so and then that's technically the work done by the engine. Work engine. It's not really, um, I mean, because, so you, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask this question. Okay, because it's kind of ambiguous. Now, let's think about what does do work on it. And again, this is a little weird. You, it, it brings in some problems, I'll tell you right now. But as this car moves, uh, there is a frictional force. Now, the problem says accelerates from rest and encounters an average frictional force. See, it's a bad problem. I almost don't want to do this problem anymore. Because what forces are acting on the car while it's accelerating? Well, there's the downward gravitational force. We have that and the upward normal force. And then there is a frictional force. It's accelerating. There has to be a force pushing it forward. And that is the frictional force. But I think what they mean when they say encounter, they say there's another frictional force going backwards, some air drag or something. I don't know. I think that they're saying that this is... Uh, a problem for the car. Now what can, makes the car actually accelerate? So I'm going to treat this problem that way, and I could be wrong, um, but again, I can just say it's a bad problem. So in this case, I know the value of that force, and I know the displacement, and this is the dot product, right? So if I wrote this as vectors, I'd have to take the dot product, but I can also write this as F delta R cosine theta, where theta is the angle between F and delta R. So it's moving this way, Delta R, F is that way. That's 180 degrees. So cosine of 180 is negative 1. So that means the work done by friction is going to be equal to the frictional force times delta R negative. So let's just leave it like that. We can put our numbers later. But this F 
is that delta r is that, okay, negative that. And that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy, delta k, plus the change in uh, chemical potential energy. And I want to solve for that, right? So let's solve for the change in chemical potential energy. Uh, I get delta e c is going to be negative f delta r minus delta k. And so it starts with, this is going to be equal to negative ff delta r minus k2 plus k1. Because this is final minus initial, but I have a negative sign there, right? And the initial kinetic energy right here, k1, is zero. I start from rest. And I can find that final, it's a minus. Uh, so now I'm going to get a negative change work done on the car and a negative and a final kinetic energy and that's going to give me a negative value for the change in internal energy and the work is the opposite of that because it's the work done so we can we're really done let's just put in our numbers delta e c equals uh <clears throat> negative one one five six times four two five minus one half the mass four six eight times the final velocity squared 125 squared Where's my calculator? Here it is. Okay, let's put in our values. And this is going to give me a negative number, and I'm going to take the positive of that. So I'm just going to do that one step. So I'm going to say on clear 1156 times 425. And now I'm taking the opposite of so I'm going to say plus, right? So plus 0 0.5 times 468 times. 1, 2, 5 squared equals, well, that's 4.15 times 10 to the 6 joules. Okay, now part B, <clears throat> I'm going to use different paper. So it says, what's the power output? This one's pretty easy because we define power. as P delta E over delta T, or uh, work over delta T. It's the rate that you change the energy. And I just calculated the work done by that, and they give me delta T, so I can just calculate the power. Power is going to be, what did I say, 4.15 4 times 10 to the sixth joules over 7 point, is it 7.14? 7.16 seconds. Okay, so that will give me the power in watts. So I'm going to calculate that. Uh, 4.15 times 10 to the 6 divided by 7.16. Did I get that right? It's hard to see. I can't see. Uh, and that gives me... 5.780 times 10 to the fifth watts. Now, I think it'd be fun to go ahead and convert this into horsepower. Uh, and I can't remember the exact value. One watt in horsepower. So, one watt equals, oh, that did it the other way around. Let's do one horsepower in watts. I think that's the way you'd normally see it. One horsepower to watts. One HP equals 745.7 watts. So if I use that value, I can calculate this in watts. So let's say power, and this is just a reminder of how to do unit conversions. So power is 5.8 times 10 to the fifth watts. And what I'm going to do is multiply that by a quantity 1 divided by 1, or anything divided by something. If I multiply this by 1, I'm not changing the answer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this by 1 horsepower divided by 745.7 watts. So since 1 horsepower is equal to this, this fraction is the value 1. I'm not actually changing the quantity, it'll just end up changing the units. Because here you can see the watt unit cancels and I'll get horsepower. So if I take this number, 
clear 5.8 times 10 to the fifth divided by 745.7, I get 778 HP. That's the, the power in horsepower. Okay, that was kind of fun, not a great problem, uh, not super complicated either, but hope that helps.